Are you tired of people getting rich off of your dreams? Are you tired of doing your podcast for free? Well, I encourage people to check out the Anchor app because you can have ads, you can have commercials, and you can have a wide viewing audience. And you can speak your mind and get paid for it. And not to mention, it's free. Anchor will distribute your podcast from Spotify to Apple. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make in a, pro- in a podcast. This is King No NBA and Music Talk, endorsing Anchor. Yes, yes, niggas and niggerettes. I'm back with another show. Now, if y'all ain't check out Anchorman, I suggest you do so. This is the new wave. This is the new format. This is how I'm coming in 2020, you know what I'm saying? With real shit, nothing but real topics. Now, you know, um, <clears throat> yesterday... I talked about the conflicted soundtrack with the Griselda niggas. And I actually watched the movie yesterday. Yeah, I was a little excited about it because I ain't never seen none of them niggas act. I know they probably can't. But, um, let's drop the beat. We're going to talk about it. Just for a little bit before we get into the main basis of this show, which is the uh, top 50 lyricist. Um, conflicted pretty much was everything I described it yesterday, but, um, as far as the movie goes, I feel like two hours and 10 minutes was way too fucking long. And I think certain scenes could have been left out, but you know, I didn't like the fact that one of the lead characters died an hour in. I wanted to expand a little bit more. Second, the movie wasn't violent enough. Now, this is supposed to be a street movie about, you know, selling drugs and killing people and fucking and shit like that. It didn't have enough killing. It wasn't violent violent enough for me. I wanted a little bit more action. And a little bit more backstories on the rival gangs. You know, it just seemed like they were just throwing characters in. Another thing, I did not like Jay Holiday's character. Like, what is your purpose? And then, you know, he plays a big part in the climax of the movie, which is one of the worst climaxes I've ever fucking seen. I mean, I did like Benny the Butcher's character. Um, He was a good character. Uh, The lead character, I don't know the guy's name. He looks like Diet Beanie Siegel. Uh, Diet Beans, you know, he was, you know, the main character was a guy named Hunter who was just got out of jail, who did a five year bid and is trying to change his life. And he has thrown so many obstacles throughout the movie you know he meets him a little girlfriend and you know she's influencing him and influencing him enough to get back into the work for to get into the workforce instead of back into the drug game but many consequences happen that lead hunter and back into the drug game and back into the uh, street life and that's why i guess they tied the title it uh conflicted the best scenes, honestly, they all had West Side Gun in it. The, those were some of the best scenes to me. It's just him just being him. He didn't have to do too much. And he had, you know, big parts in this movie. Benny did a decent job, though. I have to give Benny some credit. Um, as far as the stories in the, within the story, terrible. 
Overall, if I were to grade this movie, I'd probably say C minus. You know, I'd probably give it a two out of five stars. I mean, because I like, although I like the first hour up until, you know, one of the leads die. After that, I think that's when the movie um, ran out of steam. That's why I felt like if if Conflicted was an hour and a half, it would have been a way better movie. That's just my personal opinion. Anyway, man, let's get the top 50 lyricists of all time. All right. Honestly, this is a very difficult list to come up with and think about because there's so many great lyricists that did not have commercial success and you know including them along with those that did it's a nice little mashup to me I think my list is great I spent hours compiling you know who belonged and who didn't um people like Rhapsody leaving people like Rhapsody West Side Gun Benny the Butcher and and, and, and uh, Conway the Machine. I mean, I believe uh, if those four l- lyricists continue to do what they do, um, they'll definitely make the list one day in probably about five, ten years. But anyway, let's get to number 50. Number 50, Common. Common has had one of the more consistent careers, especially... Um, with the albums that he released. I mean, he released at least five or six classic albums. I mean, you can go down the line here from the resurrection to can I borrow a dollar to um B to finding forever to find uh, 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 uh nobody smiling to I mean, this dude just got and it, it, like water for chocolate. Like the list goes on and on. I mean, coming through the '90s and the 2000s, he definitely displayed some top tier lyricism. And I believe, personally, I think he got Ice Cube in that rap battle. That's just me. All right, number 49, Bun B. Bun B used to kill every feature in the '90s, from top to bottom. I mean, and all the UGK songs like Murder and Wood Wheel and Chopping Blades and, you know, Bun B is a staple in hip hop and he is a ambassador, if you will, because he continues to be consistent. I mean, he got five mics in the source for an album called Trill OG. I mean, I liked all of Bun B's albums too, man. And I just think that he is definitely going to go down as one of the... I mean, he's already I what I think is a, a top 50 all-time rapper. So he definitely deserves his due as a lyricist. Number 48, Ludacris. I mean, from the fast Chicago Midwestern style of flow to the raw and gritty Atlanta crunk sound, Ludacris was able for about five or six years to dominate commercially and do it at rhyming at a high level i always said that Ludacris was always a southern version of lloyd banks because he had great songs he had hard punch lines and he always had memorable verses on certain records um number 47 prodigy prodigy is one of the more underrated rappers ever like in the 90s you know what i'm saying prodigy and mob deep were one of the best rap duos in the game and prodigy was cited even by new york's elite as one of the best rappers coming from new york and you know It's a shame that P didn't get his until his death. I felt like he deserved a lot more when he was living. Number 46, Big Boy from Outkast. This is another overlooked person that I feel like doesn't get enough due for sharp lyricism. 
I mean, if you look at his scheming, you look at his flow, and you look at the topics that he tackles, I mean, you have to go against Andre 3000 on every song. And he not only did he hold his own, but I think that he didn't then got Andre on a couple of records. That's just me personally. Number 45, Scarface. I mean, Scarface come, you know, is one of the, I mean, is arguably the first Southern MC to see any commercial, you know what I'm saying? Any commercial anything. And then Scarface just kept getting sharper and sharper and sharper. Scarface is no more for storytelling than bars, but Scarface got bars too. It's not like Face was just talking. You know, Scarface had told some of the darkest stories on record. Number 44, Wale. Wale is a newer a newer entry. I feel like Wale has the catalog and the uh, years put in to be put on this list. I think Wale is definitely a top 50 lyricist. I mean, he's been putting in work for years. I think it's about time that he receives a little bit of recognition, despite being such a new face. Number 43. Busta Rhymes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Am I right? Let me make sure. 50, 49, 48, 47, 46. Yeah, 43. Busta Rhymes. Busta Rhymes, you know, whether it whether he had the tongue-tied flow, whether he had the wilding out flow, or just the laid back and cool with it flow. Busta Rhymes has for two, three decades has shown that he is very consistent. I mean, when he dropped Extinction Level Event 2 this year, he still showed that he had a lot left back in the tank. Now, was ELE 2 better than the first one? Hell no. But I'm just saying that Buster Rhymes, you know, since 89, has been just sharp and on his game and just more... Honestly, he's more known for his animation than his bars, but you can't not the fact that Buster ain't got bars number 42 Pusha T ironically his as his instrumental is playing Pusha T continues to put his stamp on the game with his lyricism about coke and his bars about certain things that you wouldn't expect him to talk about and he has sparred with some of the all-time greats on the mic and held his own. I mean, also, you have to remember he was also a member of the group Clips with his brother No Malice. And that group within itself put out three classic albums. And obviously, we all know that Pusha has one of the best diss songs ever in Story of Adidon, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> Number 41, Styles P the Ghost. SP is definitely known by a lot of people as one of the greatest, you know what I'm saying, lyricists. And SP the Ghost has just proven on every record, you know, whether he's going back and forth with Jada Kiss, whether he's barring up on BMF with Rick Ross. I mean, and then, you know, Good Times is his biggest hit. You know, this is that that's one of the best hip-hop songs ever. So you got to give props where props is due to Styles P. Number 40, Raekwon the Chef. Man, although he's not as known as Ghostface and Meth, you know, Raekwon still finds a way to make his presence be felt with his great wordplay and his knowledge and his bars about the, the streets of Staten Island. I mean, you know, just one of the me- members of the greatest group in hip hop history, Wu Tang Clan. You know what I'm saying? Raekwon con- continues to prove that I think he's just one of the greatest lyricists ever, man, from, 
you know, built only built for Cuban links one and two. You know, what I mean that that alone right there puts him on the map. Number thirty nine, Ice Cube. Ice Cube is a legend. Like this dude been you know been rapping since he was fifteen years old. You know what I'm saying? And him pinning for Dr. Dre and Easy E, and then starting his own solo career and you know. You got to think about this man's first few projects. You got Straight Outta Compton. You got America's Most Wanted. Kill at Will EP. Uh, Death Certificate. The Predator. Lethal Injection. Like these are his, this, this, this is this man's first projects he ever contributed to. So you got to give props to what props is due. And then Cube can still rap right now. Like, I heard songs of Cube two years ago that goes in. You know, if you heard um, Arrest the President, Chase Down the Bully, you know, you you can see that Cube is still sharp with his lyricism skills. Number 38, Twista. Twista is one of the greatest MCs ever. And, you know, especially around the time of... 1996 to like 2006 Twista was killing the game and Twista came out of nowhere he came out of shy rat like where and he came out in 91 just imagine that this dude been doing this shit for 20 years 20 plus years <clears throat> and had a nice little run you know everybody wanted to sign Twista at one point from Rockefeller to Bad Boy to, you know what I mean, to Def Jam. Like, you know, he obviously ended up, I think, signing with Atlantic Records. But, man, Twista's style, his speed raps, and the bars that are tucked under in there definitely make for a great position to be as one of the, great, one of the greatest lyricists of all time. Number 37, Lloyd Banks. Yeah, Lloyd Banks, dog. This nigga was, is known as a punchline king. The PLK. You understand me? Banks from the G-Unit days, and even right now, man. If you listen to his new song off of the Griselda Conflicted soundtrack, this shows that Lloyd Banks still has it as a top-tier lyricist. And he was a genius and was well ahead of his time. Number 36. I believe that's where I'm at. 40, 39, 38. Yeah, number 36. Fabulous. Fabulous is definitely one of the greatest lyricists to ever do it. He's another guy that was nice with the punchlines, but I think he was a little bit more nice with it. I mean, he's smooth, he's charismatic, he's a ladies' man. And his punchlines can air out a room. And he has established for years that he was the young OG, and he continues to do it at a high level even to this day. Despite him dropping almost 20 years ago. Number 35. Exhibit. Yeah, man. X to the motherfucking Z. A lot of people forgot about Exhibit. You want to know why? Because the... um. The Pimp My Ride situation messed up his momentum, his run, and pretty much his career as an elite rapper. Because when Exhibit was on, let me tell you something. This man was co-signed by Dr. Dre, Eminem, Nate Dogg, and Snoop Dogg. When those guys co-sign you, you're put, and you put that Dr. Dre production along with it. It put Exhibit to another stratosphere. Exhibit was already good before the Dr. Dre and Eminem affiliation. But his punchlines, 
His songwriting is just among one of the more underrated to me. Like Exhibit deserves a lot more respect as one of the greatest rappers, not just great lyricists. Number 34, The Game. The Game is one of those dudes that, you know, he was known for name dropping, but he was he's a nice he's a nice lyricist though. I mean, he's put out great projects and has outrhymed a lot of superior competition. You know what I'm saying? And The Game Definitely needs his respect. I don't see him mentioned enough on lyricist list, greatest rapper list. I mean, he has the catalog, he has the body of work, and he's got the bars. Number 33, Fonte from Little Brother. Now, if you're not familiar with Little Brother or Fonte, um, Little Brother was a group comprised of uh, rapper Big Pooh, Fonte and Knife Wonder, and they released their album, The Minstrel Show, in 2003, which sparked, you know, another part of the neo-soul movement, and Fonte, his two solo albums, Charity Starts at Home, and um, No no Good News is New, No No Good News is New, fuck, I can't enunciate the title right now. No news is good news. That's the name of the album. But um, Fonte's lyric lyrical ability is second to none. His bars, his storytelling, and the things that he talks about is very fucking interesting. I definitely suggest you should listen to The Minstrel Show and, you know, in Little Brother's discography and Fonte's solo discography. Number 32, Tretch from Naughty by Nature. Listen, Tretch is one of the greatest lyricists to ever touch the mic. Whether it's fast paced, whether it's slow paced, whether he's telling stories about how he's going to mourn pop till he joined them. You know what I mean? Tretch was that fucking deal throughout the entire 90s. Soon as Uptown Anthem comes out to the towards the end of his career with the jamboree shit Tretch always knew how to build a song so shout out to Tretch number 31 Cool G Rap Cool G Rap is you know in through the late 80s all the way to the mid 90s he was just so fucking dominant with his presence, his lyrical ability, and his, and his distinctive voice with the lisp in it, man. Cool G Rap, he definitely knew what the fuck was, was, was happening with it. Straight up, man. So I got to give a big shout out to him, man, and, and, and show a salute to Cool G Rap. Man, y'all got to fuck with that Ill Street Blues, man. That poison poison (laughs) but yeah 